Okay, in the past two mini lectures, we talked about descriptive techniques. Now we're going to shift gears and talk about correlational studies. We say that two variables correlate with one another when they move together in some way. So for example, hot temperatures correlate with the months of August, September, and October here in LA. Large shoe sizes correlate with tall heights, for example. Two variables that accompany one another. They don't have to go in the same direction, but each one has to move um, at the same time. We measure correlations with something called a correlation coefficient. And that's a number that tells us the strength of the association, the strength of the correlation, and also the direction of it. Um, there are, so the correlation coefficient we uh, refer to with a, a lower letter R, and uh, it's got a sign to it. Either a correlation, a correlation coefficient can be positive or it could be negative, it could be zero. When a correlation coefficient is positive, it means that the two variables move together. So they both increase at the same time or they both decrease at the same time. Um, if a correlation coefficient is negative, it means that the two variables move in opposite directions. As one decreases, the other increases. Or as that one decreases, this one increases. So for example, right now in California, as the number of COVID cases increases, the number of people with jobs decreases. That would be a negative correlation coefficient. Um, Correlation coefficients are easiest to see when we look at graphs, uh, scatter plots. Um, you put one variable on each axis, axis, one variable on each axis of a graph. So for example, let's look at what's on your left hand side. We've got two variables. One is scores on a particular exam, and the other is how many hours the students study. So we're looking at the relationship. Is there a relationship between how many hours students studied for an exam and the score that they got on that exam? And you see this dashed line that we've got. That dashed line is telling us that there's a very strong association between how many hours a student studies and what grade they get on the exam. For each extra bit of time they spend studying for the exam, they get an increase in their grade. That's a very strong correlation. The two variables move together. They both go positively at the same time. That means it's a positive correlation. And the number of that correlation is the number one because it's perfect. For each increase in the number of hours studied, there's an equal increase in the exam score. So the R there is a plus one. In the graph next door, you see a correlation coefficient that's negative. So we're looking again at two variables. One is exam score, and the other is how much time a student spends um, on their social media before an exam. This time, you can see that the dashed line points downward. In other words, as a number of hours, I'm sorry, as a number of hours that someone spends on social media increases, their exam score decreases, presumably because the more you're on social media, the less time you've got to study, right? So that's a negative correlation. The line is perfectly straight, so that's why um, uh, the, the correlation is a one, and it is negative because the two variables move in opposite directions. As you spend more time on social media, your exam score drops. Um, so the examples that I just showed you are straight lines. Correlation coefficient for a straight line is going to be the number one. Um, if the points are more messy, if it's more of a cloud, then the correlation coefficient is going to be less than one. It's going to be maybe closer to zero or halfway between the two. In the chart that's on your right hand side now, I show that there's no correlation between your score on some exam and how many apples you've eaten, right? There's no reason for the two of them to be related in any way. So when you plot the data, they don't lie on a line or anything that looks like even a thick or a blurry line. Um, it's just this sphere of points that are all over the place. 
In this case, the correlation between those two variables, apples eaten and exam scores, is zero. There's no relationship between the two. Now I want to show you some real-world correlations. Here's our first example. On the vertical axis is a percentage of people who experience discrimination, who believe that uh, discrimination is prevalent. On the horizontal axis is the percentage of people um, from each state who voted for President Trump during the 2016 election. And what I want you to see is that overall there's a downward negative uh, correlation, a negative slope. That is, the more people say um, that they experience or discrimination or that discrimination is prevalent, the fewer or the less likely that state was or that person was to cast a vote for President Trump. Okay? Now, there's some scatter to the points. The correlation isn't perfect. In this case, the correlation is a negative 0.69. That's a strong correlation. It shows, you can see from the dots, that there's a strong association between the two variables. In the next graph, um, there is a less strong association. This is a graph that correlates or attempts to correlate the level of poverty in each county in the United States versus um, the percentage of people in that county who voted for the Republican contender for the 2012 presidential election, that is Mitt Romney. Um, and you can see that there's a lot of noise. It, it, there's not a clear, strong association between the amount of poverty in a particular county and the number of people in that county who voted for Mitt Romney back in 2012. So that's a weaker association. All right, now I want you to figure out whether a correlation is positive or negative. So let's take the first one. The more children watch TV, the less they read. So there's two variables there. How many, how long, how much time you spend watching TV and how much time you spend reading, or children do. What you find is more children read, the I'm sorry, the more children watch TV, the less they read. These are going in opposite directions, so it means we're dealing with a negative correlation. Number two, the more violent a person is, the more violent the television and media that they watch. So the more violent a person is, the more violent media they consume. These are moving in the same direction, so it's a positive correlation. So at number three, the longer children are breastfed, the greater their later academic achievement. This is actually a true research finding. And what do they find? The more a child is breastfed, the better their academic achievement later in life. It's moving in the same direction, so a positive correlation. Number four, the more often teens eat breakfast, the lower their body mass. This is also, all four of these, in fact, are true findings. So the more uh, often teenagers eat breakfast, the lower their body mass, that is, the, the leaner they are. So these are moving in opposite directions. What does that mean? Negative correlation. Okay, here's a statement that if you forget everything from this class, Here's a statement I want you to remember. Just because two variables correlate with each other does not mean that one causes the other. Just because you have a correlation does not mean you've identified a cause or a causation. This is counterintuitive. Many people um, make this mistake all the time. It creates great problems in our country and everywhere else in the world is people assume that if two things are correlated they must be causally linked. So let me give you an example that points out how correlation and causation are two different things. True fact, ice cream consumption, how much ice cream people eat, correlates with the number of drownings. That's absolutely true. The more people eat ice cream, the more drownings there are. These two variables are positively correlated. But does this mean we should ban ice cream because it causes drowning? No. <laughs> Eating ice cream does not cause people to drown, nor does drowning cause people to eat ice cream. They're correlated, but they're not causally linked. What causes both of them? Think about it. 
What time of the year do you most often eat ice cream? And what time of the year are you most likely to go swimming? Summer. So that both of these variables are caused by a third variable, the weather. Okay. So that's why they can correlate, but one doesn't cause the other one. Here's, let's look at the next one. Baldness correlates strongly and positively with marriage duration, how long your marriage lasts. So does this mean you should run out and start dating bald men? Does baldness, do bald men somehow cause their marriages to last longer? Turns out, no. Who's more likely to be bald, a young man or an old man? Older people are more likely to be bald, and older people are more likely to be married for a longer period of time. So they're correlated, but they're not causal. Here's another correlation where there's no causation. This graph shows you the rise in the global temperature of the Earth. So this is a, a demonstration of global warming. It's absolutely true. Um, going back to 1820, the temperature of the Earth has increased 2 degrees Celsius. Now, during that same time period from 2018 to now, while the Earth is warming, the number of pirates, pirates, you know, like the pirates of the Caribbean and Disneyland, the number of pirates decreases. Hmm, what is it about temperature that's leading to a, a decrease in pirates? Well, no, they're correlated, but they're not causal. We're not going to solve global warming by hiring more people to be pirates. Um, uh, it's just that both of these things happened over the same 200 year period. Here's another correlation. It turns out that the number of cases of autism that are diagnosed has increased and that increase maps on beautifully with how much organic food we're selling. So there's a very, very strong correlation between autism and the consumption of organic foods. So that might make you think, wow, should I stop eating organic because it might make me autistic? No, we don't need to ban, um, uh, we don't need to ban organic foods to stop autism. Um, there's two different things cause those variables. They just happen to change at the same time. So they're correlated, but they're not causally linked. Uh, here's another example on the cartoon on your left hand side. There's a little boy on an airplane and he says to his mom, I wish they didn't turn on the seatbelt side so much. Every time they do, it gets bumpy. The kid is thinking that putting on the seatbelt sign is causing the plane to experience turbulence, right? That's a kid getting confused between causation and correlation. Um, true fact, um, ice, uh, sorry, umbrellas are more likely to be sold. When a lot of umbrellas are being sold, there's a big increase in traffic fatalities. So are umbrellas killing drivers? No. It's just that when do you buy umbrellas? When it rains. When do people get in car accidents? When it rains. So one doesn't cause the other. They're both caused by a third variable, rain. Here's another a cor a correlation that people get think long about. Does height make you smarter? Think about this. You got to answer this one. A study of school children found that height was positively correlated with vocabulary si size. Should we make short kids learn more and more and more vocabulary to make them grow taller? No. Vocabulary size and height are correlated, but they're not causal. You know this. Who's going to be taller, a first grader or a sixth grader? The sixth grader. Who's going to have a bigger vocabulary, the first grader or the sixth grader? The sixth grader. Older kids are taller and have bigger vocabularies. That's why there is this correlation, but it's not a causal link. Here's the last one. Uh, it turns out that these two lines that you see in the chart next to you, it turns out that the time of year where there's the most shark attacks is also the same time of year that there is the most ice cream sold. Should we stop selling ice cream to save people from shark attacks? No, 
These two variables are correlated, but they're not causally linked. Selling ice cream does not cause sharks to attack people, right? It's just that both of them happen in the summertime. Shark attacks increase when people go in the ocean. And when do they do that? In the summer. When do people eat a lot of ice cream? In the summer. So there's, a, again, this third variable, the weather, that is causally linked to these two other variables that are only correlated. So correlation is not causation. Remember that. Correlation is not causation. Correlation does not mean causation. Okay, that's it for this mini lecture. Come back in a little bit for our last mini lecture on the experimental method in psychological research.